So what we want to look at in this video is what we call changing the subject of a formula. And this concept is very, very useful in mathematics because what, what this concept does, it actually helps us to uh, make, make a, a variable the subject of an equation. And so when, you, when you're doing like, um, you're like algebra, you some part, well, some aspect of algebra, we're not actually doing like um, vectors and matrices, functions and relations. All of those are actually, um, you actually have to be very skillful or, or very um, well-rounded when you're actually uh, making or uh, changing the subject of uh, changing the subject of a formula. Well, let's try to understand what is this uh, concept. So it's it's like it's a it's a it's an it's an equation that you know it has variables and sometimes it probably have um, numbers in it. Uh, and then you actually, you will actually have to rearrange. You have to rearrange the the equation to have just this specific variable or letter by itself. And when it is all by itself, then it is then it is now called the subject of the formula or the equation. And so we must remember how we solve equations from a linear equation. When we actually when we actually uh, know the opposite of addition is subtraction, the opposite of multiplication is division, the opposite of square is square root and all that. So the opposite of uh, addition is take is take away. Opposite of multiplication is division. Uh, the opposite of a square is basically a square root, and the opposite of a cube is actually a cube root, and it, and, and and it continues. So you have, we have to know all of these uh, inverse operations, and then we can actually solve or change the subject of a formula. So let's do some example. So let's say we have it's a very simple one. If we if we want to make say make are the subject. So if I have R, let's say, R plus T is equal to A. Now what this simply means, we need to have R by itself. When you look at this equation, A is the subject. So we want to rearrange this equation. So R is by itself, and it will then become the subject of this equation. So we need to get rid of the T. We need to get rid of the, 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 uh, the T. So it's a positive T. Therefore, we must apply the opposite operation, or an opposite term of a positive T, which is a negative T. And so th this negative T and, and positive T, uh, they cancel out each other. And it gives us a 0. So 0 plus R gives us R all by itself. What we could call the, uh, these two, what we call a zero pair. So when you add a negative one plus a positive one, when they when 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 they actually work out, they actually give you they actually give you zero, and so these opposite terms give you zero. So finally, let's go. Let's so say we have now r is equal to a minus t, and that's that that simply that's just simply it. Let's look at another one. If we say make R the subject in this one, we say minus, uh, let's use T, A, make R the subject, then we'll actually have to add both the side by T because it's a negative T and that those two will cancel, leaving us R, because R is equal to A plus T. Well, let's look at this one. If we have a negative R, plus s is equal to m. I only say make r the subject. Now we have a negative r in this equation. And so we want to make m the subject. Well, we could actually work this more than one way. So we could actually, the first way we could actually look at it is just, just go ahead, subtract both sides by s because it's a positive x. We want to have the, have the r by itself. 
and so we have negative r is equal to m minus s but we're having a negative r but how do we get rid of this negative because we need a positive r well since the coefficient of this r is a negative one then we'll actually and that negative one is being multiplied by the r so we'll actually um, divide both sides by a negative r by a negative one well let me just actually break it let's see see this is actually negative one times r divided by so we're going to divide both sides by a negative negative one into negative one goes one time leaving r by itself and we could actually um divide the numerator by negative so if we divide negative one into positive r positive m sorry we get a negative m i would say negative one into negative s gives us a positive s and so it is very important for you to know when you're dividing by, when you're multiplying a negative on a positive, what it gives you, when you're dividing a positive on a negative, and all of that. It's so important. But let us look at another way to try to solve this thing. Let's see if we get the same thing. Uh, let's see. Look, from, the very, from, from the very initial um, stage, we could actually... Let's see. Uh, we could actually multiply this side and this side by negative one so this one will cancel the r will become positive so if i should distribute uh, this negative in by each term in, in the equation in the in the the bracket and then also multiply over here by negative one because anything i do on the left side i do the same thing on the right side so i will just multiply i will actually distribute this negative one by each term in, in, inside the bracket. So negative 1 times negative r gives us positive r. And negative 1 times positive s gives us negative s. Equal to negative 1 times positive m gives us negative m. And now we'll just make r the subject. So we'll have to add both sides by s. And there you go r is equal to negative m plus s and this was the same answer that we got so it is another way you could actually look at it let us uh, look at this one make r the subject if i have r times w is equal to o so since the r is being multiplied by the s, by the w we we'll actually divide both sides by w that cancels that, so R is equal to O divided by W. Let's look at another one. Changing the subject. That's all we're doing, changing the subject. See, changing the subject of, the for, of, of, the, of a formula, that's what. So, say we have, uh, what if we had, uh, what if we have R over W is equal to S? And I say, make R the subject. We could actually solve this two ways, or probably more, but let's look, at, let's look at two ways. We could actually create a fraction over here, so actually balancing both sides as fractions. And so what we'll actually do is we'll do a thing that is called cross multiply. So the, the R would be multiplied by the 1, and the S be multiplied by the W. And so if we should simplify this, we'll have R times 1 gives us R, it gives us R, and that will just be that. The other way that we could actually work this out is, let, let me see. Could actually say, well, since it doubly and the, and the R, they are dividing, so we actually use opposite of division, which is multiplication. And so we we'll actually multiply both sides by W. Create a fraction. W into W goes one time, one time. So this one times R gives us R. One times one gives us R equal to S W. And R divided by R divided by a one gives us R. So R is equal to S times W. So we come about the same quick. Same one. Uh, so let's look at 
let us look at let us look at some actual formulae for uh um well, in mathematics, we like the era of a square and the era of a, 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 a circle and the era of that. Let us look at this one. What if we had, let's say, pi r square is equal to, let's say, p. And we say, make r the subject. So we won't have r by itself. So the first thing that we'll actually do is to divide both sides by pi. But we need to understand because I have I have I have I have witnessed or seen students whenever they are trying when they, whenever they are making uh, change the subject of a formula, they would normally just move <laughs> they would not just move anything they want to move. But what I always say, the first term that you move is a term that is furthest away from the subject that you want. So in this case, if we should actually look at um if we should look at if we were to look at the order of operation for this just 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 say if we had let's say we have a pi times r square now if you were to uh, if if this if if the pi were uh, a number which one would you work first you would work the exponent that simply means the, 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 the exponent is closer to the, the 3. And let, let us put back the 5, the, the r there. So in this case, the exponent would, would actually be, the, be closer to r, while the, while the pi will be somewhat further away from r. So whenever we're actually doing, transposing, or changing the subject of a formula, always get rid of the term that is furthest away are further away from the term that you want. And so we can say this, this, into that, and so we have r squared is equal to p uh, divided by pi, and then we'll try to find this, the opposite of square. The opposite of a square is the square root. So we will square root both sides. So this square root cancels that square. And so r is equal to square root p, uh, divided by pi. Let's look at this one, make r the subject. So if you want to make r the subject, we will have to do the, the same thing. We could actually, uh, the first thing that we'll do, we need to get, uh, get rid of the 3 over 4. So since uh, this fraction is actually multiplying everything, everything, everything here, every term that we are seeing is actually they are multiplying. So what we could actually do is to get rid of this. We could actually get rid of this by inverting it, or, or you know, multiply by like actually flip. We could actually flip it or the reciprocal of this fraction, which would be four over three times. That. And then whatever we do on that side, we do the same thing on this side. So we have four. Times four. And so now 4 cancels 4 right here. 4 cancels 4, 3 cancels 3. And all of this fraction will actually be 1. Because when you multiply a reciprocal by its original, it gives you 1. So 1 times pi times r to the third gives us back pi times r to the third equal to what is over the other side of the equation. And so we know what to do because this is similar to the one that we just worked out. So we divide both sides by pi since the pi is multiplying by the r to the third. And so we divide this by pi. That can, those two cancel. And now we are left with pi to the third is equal to t four to the, to divided by and so the opposite of a cube is actually a cube root. And so we will cube root both sides. And so we have finally for answer, r is equal to cube root t three four divided by three divided by uh, 
I could actually uh, make this a little, I would simplify it. Uh, not, we don't have anything much to do more than, more than just, let's multiply the, the t by the four. Right, basically they are multiplying the fraction there. So we could say cube. Four T three divided by, and we don't want this to get any more complicated than that. We could actually convert this as a negative power based on the laws of indices, but we don't have to do that. This is okay because this could actually be equal to um, R is equal to cube root four T divided by three times pi to the to the to the negative one. So, yeah. Let's look at another one. Let's say we have square root P is equal to, let's say, hmm, let's, let's put R here. So, we basically have two operations with, with, with this R. We have a square root and we also have a multiplication. So the first thing that we're going to do is to get rid of the square. Because, uh, so we would actually square both sides. Because the opposite of a, oh, the first thing, try to get rid, the first thing we get rid of is the square root. Because the square root, the opposite of a square root is a square. So we square, we actually square both sides. And so, the square will actually cancel the square root. And so we'll have 4r is equal to p squared. And so since the r is being multiplying, uh, they are being multiplied, the r and the, the r and the 4, they are multiplying. So we'll actually do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So r is equal to p squared divided by 4. And we could actually reverse this if we wanted to. We could actually reverse this. And if we should reverse that, P would be the subject again. But uh, we don't have to do that. <laughs> let's look at another one. All right, so let's make X the subject in these ones, uh, with these ones. Let us say, if I, what if I had, uh, say, uh, the 4X plus C is equal to, say, a W is a W. And I want to make X the subject. And the first thing that we want to do is to get rid of the term that is furthest away from the subject. So C, C is actually um, further away from X. So that cancels. It's a negative positive C, so we subtract both sides. And so we are left with W minus C. Divide both sides by 4 since the 4 is being multiplied by X. And so x will actually be equal to w minus c is equal to 4. And if we, want, if we wanted, we could actually rearrange this to c, to actually have w by the, uh, being the subject if we wanted to. We could actually create a fraction, cross multiply, having the 4 times by the, w, by the x once more, and then we have this minus that, and they have double by by itself will actually we have to add both side by c and we'll actually get back the original formula that we had from the beginning. So you can do the reverse, it brings you back to where you're coming from. So the solution can bring you back to the problem. While well, the problem seeks the solution. Right. So let's look at this one. X divided by n plus two is equal to W, making X a subject. So we could do this several ways. We could actually, uh, we could actually, the thing is that we need to get rid of the fraction. Once the fraction is out of the way, then we can actually make X the subject. So what we could do, we could actually create a fraction here, create a fraction here. And what we could actually do is to find the LCM of uh, these fractions. Now this is somewhat similar when we're doing um, um, what was simplifying algebraic fraction? We actually find the LCM. So what we could do is to uh, let's say find the LCM. The LCM would actually be what, the product of these three. So n will, n will actually be the LCM because if it should multiply 
both, well, all these three actually get N. And so what we could do, since N is the LCM, we'll actually multiply both, well, all of the fractions by the LCM. And so we'll have this N cancels that N. And that's what we, we want to get rid of, the denominators. I mean, that anything that is being divided by 1, we'll get by the same thing. So we get uh, x, we have x, we have x plus 2n is equal to, oh, this n should must be over there, 2n. And so what we have, we have uh, wn. And so we actually make x a subject by subtracting both sides by this term. So that cancel, that cancel. So we actually have now x is equal to wn minus 2n. We could actually factorize this. We could, could, we should, could factor what is common in those. So it's x is equal to n is common, w minus 2. And so this will actually be our answer. And we could actually bring this back to where it's coming from, from if we wanted to. If, if we wanted, we could actually say make W the subject because W was a subject. We could actually see if we should make W the subject, we would get about the same thing. Let us try. We could say we could divide both sides by N because we want to make W the subject, divide both sides by N because the closest term to W is negative 2. And so if you were to do the order of operation in simplifying this, the first thing that you'll actually work out is what is inside of the bracket. Therefore, what is inside of the bracket, they are very close than who is outside of the bracket. So we'll actually divide both sides by n. If we were to do the reverse, that oh, divide both sides by n. And so this cancel that. And then what we'll actually have is xn is equal to w minus 2. And if we were to subtract at both sides by 2, then what we have, we have xn plus 2 is equal to w. And this takes us back to where it was coming from. Right there. When we had x over n plus 2 is equal to w. So the problem, the problem can actually bring you back to, the, to the, 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 the solution brings you back to the problem and the problem always seeks the solution. Let's look at, a, let's, let's look at another one. So, so let's look at this one. So what if I had v square equal to, uh, let's say, u square plus 2ax. And I say make x the subject. Now, when you look at this, u, to this, u square is, for, it is actually... Uh, very far away from x, so it will get, we'll actually get rid of this term first. So it is a positive u square, so we subtract both the sides by u square. And so we have v square minus u square equal to 2ax. And now we could actually just divide both sides by 2a. Since that this one term is multi they're actually multiplying. So they get rid of, so we don't need to get rid of this first and get out no. We could just you can just get rid of these two first. Well, the one time, <laughs> once and for all. And so finally the answer will be x is equal to uh, v square minus u square divided by a two or two a. Let's look at the last one. What about it? I want you to do this. Well, let us you do this one and then I will see. Let's see what we get for the answer. If you have this cube root x divided by k is equal to w. And I say make x the subject. Get 
take a try and let me see what you have. So let's go. So one of the things that we could actually do is to, we could, we could actually work this uh, more than one way. So we could actually uh, create a fraction over here. We could cross multiply. And so we'll have cube root being multiplied by one equal to W times K. Uh, and so we'll actually continue so one times over here. You, gives us back Q root X is equal to W times K. And so the opposite of a, the opposite of a cube root is actually a cube. So you actually cube both sides. And so this cube root will be cancelled by that cube. X is all by itself. And so answer will be bracket or bracket k w times k raised to the third. And if we want to prove that this is correct, we could actually do the reverse, and then it will, it will give it will give us about the same thing. So there you go, changing the subject of a formula. So do you remember, always remember your opposite operations, the opposite of or inverse operation. The opposite of uh, addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. The opposite of a square is square root. The opposite of a cube root is, is actually cube. And so there are many more. So always remember, apply your opposite uh, term or operation to get rid of that which needs to get rid of. So you can actually change the subject of a formula and focus on what is asked of you to make the subject. Have a nice time.